40 below. The kind of cold that doesn't just bite it listens. Trees snap in the dark, sharp as rifle cracks. The air doesn't move, it waits. You breathe out, the breath hangs there like it forgot where to go. Out here, winter rules everything. Nothing moves, nothing dares. And yet inside the taipi, something hums. The fire hums, the hide walls glow, then silence. The glow shivers across smoke like breath through a sleeping chest. No glass, no metal, no wires humming in the night, only the quiet rhythm of heat rising, curling, falling again. You can feel it, you can see it, you can hear warmth living its own slow life. They didn't fight the cold, they shaped it, they guided it, they lived with it. The teepee doesn't trap heat, it teaches it where to go. Each pole, each flap, each breath of wind joins the same old dance, a dance older than the fire itself. The answer wasn't one trick, it wasn't luck, it was harmony. The teepee breathes when you breathe, moves when you move, it works, it lasts, it saves lives. And when the storm howls, you can almost hear the earth whisper back through the smoke hole. We remember, simple, brilliant, alive. Out on the plains, the wind never rests. It sweeps, it howls, it searches for weakness. In that endless cold, a teepee stands alone, conical perfect against the storm. You look at it and you can tell. It wasn't built to fight the wind, it was built to dance with it. A square house. The wind slams its corners tears at its seams. Heat escapes through every edge. But a teepee, its shape, pulls the storm around it, like water flowing past a stone. The air moves, but it doesn't steal warmth. It feeds it. The old ones figured this out not with blueprints, but with breath. They saw how smoke rose, curled, and circled. They watched how hot air spun above a fire, how it gathered and fell again. Then they shaped their homes to match that motion. That's the secret. They didn't trap heat, they taught it to move. To build it right, they bent long poles into a cone, hide stretched tight at 25 degrees. The top narrow the base wide fire right in the heart. When the flames rise, warm air climbs, hits the slope, circles back down the hide, over and over. Convection made by instinct, not math. You can feel the result the moment you step inside. The air doesn't sit still, it hums. It moves like breath in a living chest. Moisture doesn't cling, walls stay dry. The warmth doesn't fade, it returns. It works, it lasts, it saves lives. They didn't fight the wind, they befriended it. Let it flow, let it teach. That's the genius they found comfort, not by sealing themselves away, but by shaping space so the wind could pass through without stealing. We build boxes now, corners, angles, traps, but warmth hates cages. Warmth loves to move, simple, brilliant, alive. At the very top of the teepee, there's a small opening, just a hole really, but that hole is everything. It breathes, it listens, it decides whether the fire inside will live or choke. Out here, smoke isn't just smoke, it's the heartbeat of the home. If you open it wrong, the wind flips and pushes the smoke down. The air turns thick, eyes burn, fire gasps for air, but the old ones learn to read the wind, not fight it. They turn the flap toward her away, feeling the pressure shift on their faces until the smoke rose clean and steady. That's how they made a chimney without bricks. A system without metal, a balance born from watching the sky. Two hides move like winds. Poles lift hands, tighten cords. Cold air slips in low hot air, escapes high, a living draft that feeds the flame and clears the air. The tippy becomes its own set of lungs, pulling, exhaling, breathing, the world in rhythm with the weather. You can hear it, a hum, a whisper, a sigh. The wind enters as an enemy, leaves as an ally. Inside there's no sting in the eyes, no choking haze, just warmth circling dry and gentle. It works, it lasts, it saves lives. They built climate control without switches or wires. No thermostat, no fan, just sky and instinct. When the sun shifts, the flap shifts. When the storm turns, the teepee turns too. 
They didn't need to dominate the weather, they learn its song. While we press buttons to fix our comfort, they raised their hands to feel the air and adjusted by touch. Simple, silent, perfect. We built walls to keep the wind out. They built homes that breathed with it. Inside the teepee, there's more than meets the eye. Behind the flicker of firelight, a second wall hides in plain sight, thin, quiet, and vital. That inner hide doesn't boast, doesn't shine, but it holds one of the oldest secrets of survival. Warmth doesn't come from trapping air. It comes from teaching it to stay still. With only one layer, heat slips away fast. The walls sweat, moisture freezes, the cold seeps through like a slow thief. But with two layers, something changes. Between them, a thin pocket of still air forms a silent blanket that no wind can touch. That gap, just four or six inches wide, becomes life itself. They didn't call it insulation, they just knew. The inner wall, tied along the frame, hangs soft and close. It catches the glow of the fire, absorbs its warmth, and holds it steady while the outer hide takes the hit from the storm. Hot air rises, curls, and lingers, like breath caught between cupped hands. The space between becomes a cradle of warmth. Step inside and you'll feel it not too hot, not damp, but balanced. The walls stay dry, no frost creeping in, no wet hides cracking with cold. It's quiet warmth, gentle warmth, the kind that lasts through the night without roaring flames. It works. It lasts. It saves lives. Centuries later, we'd give it a name double wall tent. We'd patent it, diagram it, sell it in glossy catalogs. But they, they built it from memory, from instinct, from breath. We think we invented insulation. We didn't. We just forgot where it came from. Simple, ancient, alive. The ground doesn't forgive. It steals warmth the moment you lie down. You can feel it, that slow, invisible pull, like the earth trying to drink the heat right out of your bones. Out here, if you sleep on bare snow, you won't make it till morning. Not from hunger, from cold. But the old ones knew how to turn the forest into a mattress. They didn't need foam plastic or a brand name. Just pine grass and fur, that was their insulation. Three layers, simple perfect. Thick pine boughs at the bottom, dry grass in the middle, and on top a heavy hide beaver bear, or buffalo if they had it. Each layer worked together like muscle and skin, keeping the body lifted dry alive. They called it nothing special, just bed. But it was a science of survival. The pine trapped air and stopped the cold from rising. The grass breathed wicking away moisture. The fur caught and reflected body heat, holding it close without suffocation. Warm air doesn't need trapping. It needs space to move to settle to stay. Lay down on it and you can feel the difference instantly. The ground's bite fades. The chill turns soft. The body sighs. It works. It lasts. It saves lives. No tents rated for minus 40. No memory foam. Just nature arranged with care and understanding. When the layers got damp, they replaced them. When the snow melted, they spread them out to dry in the wind. Maintenance was part of survival, not convenience, but rhythm. They didn't fight the ground, they learned how to live above it. They respected that the earth always pulls warmth down, so they lifted themselves up, using the forest's hands to hold them through the night. Today, we buy high-tech mats and thermal sheets. They just use the woods, and somehow, they slept warmer, simple, honest, enough. In the heart of every teepee burns a fire, not by the wall, not in the corner, but right in the middle. The center isn't just a spot, it's the balance point between man and storm. You can feel it when you step inside. The heat moves like a living thing breathing up, circling the roof and falling back around you in a quiet spiral of warmth. If you set the fire too close to the edge, the smoke cools. It clings, crawls and bites at your eyes. The air cools unevenly, one side too hot and the other freezing. But when the flames rise from the center, the whole teepee becomes a system, a perfect draft. Hot air climbs the cone, kisses the hides above, rolls down the slope, and returns again. It's not trapped. It moves. It breathes. 
The old ones built their hearths from stones, a small circle, right under the smoke hole. Dry wood stacked with care, nothing wasted, every log chosen for how it burned, how it sounded. Hands cracked from cold, arranged them in silence, knowing exactly how the air would feed the flame. They didn't read it, they felt it. Step closer and you'll see the dance. Heat rising smoke slipping through the top air, sweeping low to replace it a constant rhythm of life and balance. Every spark feeds the draft. Every breath of wind outside joins in. The tippy becomes a lung, the fire its heart, the result even warmth. Dry walls, no cold corners. It works, it lasts, it saves lives. That center fire did more than heat, it gathered the family. It cooked, it dried clothes, it told stories and shadows. The tippy wasn't heated from the inside, it was alive from the center. We heat our homes by pushing buttons. They did it by placing a single flame where it belonged in the heart. Simple, ancient, true. When night falls, the cold changes its shape. It's not the same chill from the day, it's heavier, slower patient. It creeps in through cracks, crawls beneath hides, steals the warmth one breath at a time. Out here, if you don't seal your teepee right, you'll wake up with frost for company. The old families had their ritual. Every evening, just before sleep, they walked the circle, checking flaps, tightening cords, pulling hides down low. They knew the wind shifts after sunset. What was safe an hour ago could turn into a draft that drains the fire. So they closed from the windward side, first flap by flap, working upward toward the smoke hole. Not all the way, never fully shut, just a hand's width open so the tippy could still breathe. They lowered the liner to a few inches closer to the ground. That trapped the low heat, the gentle kind that rises from sleeping bodies. At the base, they tucked an extra hide, soft, heavy, sealing the cold where it bites hardest. The smoke hole was narrowed just enough to let the breath of fire escape without letting the sky reach in. By the time they lay down, the air inside had changed. Still, warm, alive. The fire hummed like a heartbeat. The hides rustled softly when the wind brushed them, but no draft passed through. Through the night, the teepee held its warmth like a living thing, breathing slow, steady. Come morning, you'd wake to a soft glow, to the scent of smoke and fur, and the air still warm from your own sleep. It wasn't just the fire that kept them alive, it was the rhythm, the habit, the care. Warmth wasn't a switch to flip, it was something you worked with your hands every night. We turn off the lights before bed, they lulled their homes to sleep, gentle, human, wise. A teepee wasn't just shelter, it was alive. It aged, breathed, and needed care like skin. After storms or long nights of snow, the hides would darken damp at the seams heavy with cold. Left alone, they'd mold sag and rot, but the old ones never left them alone. They treated each teepee as part of the family fed by fire, healed by smoke. They learned something simple and brilliant. Ash and smoke could do what oil and paint never could. When the fire burned down to a soft bed of ash, they gathered it fine gray, almost silky. A handful scattered across the flames made the smoke turn thick and rich. That smoke crept into the hides, coating every fiber, sealing it against rain. The ash drew out moisture, killed mold, kept bugs away. It smelled of earth and life and survival. They'd rotate the teepee too, not often, but enough to let the sun and wind reach every side, no part left to decay. Every pole, every hide, every cord was checked, tightened, brushed with care. Maintenance wasn't a chore, it was respect. Respect for warmth, for home, for balance. The result, hides that lasted through years of snow, walls that stayed dry even under icy rain, Smoke that didn't just rise, winter, it preserved, it worked, it lasted, it burn, saved lives. They didn't waterproof by fighting nature, they worked with it. Fire made the seal, smoke made the skin breathe. Ash became armor, the teepee didn't resist the weather, it adapted to it. We paint, they smoked. We coat things to block the world out, they lived with it. It's strange, isn't it? They kept their homes alive by letting them breathe.
Ancient, gentle, true. They never fought the cold. They spoke to it. Out there on the plains where the wind had a voice of its own, they learned to listen to move with it, not against it. Every part of the teepee was a conversation between man and nature, the cone that guided the air, the hides that breathed the fire that pulsed like a heart. Nothing wasted, nothing forced. We built boxes that fight the storm. They built homes that breathe with it. Their wisdom wasn't about insulation, it was about rhythm. A dance between heat and wind, between silence and flame. They didn't fight the cold, they danced with it. Harmony, not insulation.